Greetings, clarinetists. My name is Dr. Sarah Manasra. I believe every clarinetist has a few times a year where the weather really affects their reads. For me, this is one of those times. So I decided to sit down with Dr. Christopher Nichols of the University of Delaware and find out what his experience with synthetic reads is. I learned a whole lot and it gave me a lot to think about. I also hope that you enjoy it. Thanks. So um, when did you start using synthetic reads and how were you introduced to them? I started using them in 2013. Um, and uh, the backstory on that is actually I was grumping about read troubles and preparation and all that stuff with traveling with a friend and colleague uh, who has played on synthetics for a very long time. Uh, her name's Kathy Ogram. Um, but I initially started tinkering with them to try to help my students find functional read and mouthpiece combos that wouldn't require much maintenance. Uh, my first faculty position was at a, a small uh, university, Concordia University in Seward, Nebraska, that had a lot of non-majors um, and a few music majors. But I was like, well, in 25 minutes a week, I really don't want to be messing with the read so much because it's it's so important that it that it works the, the resistance combination and all that kind of stuff i'm going to work on their musicianship uh and and uh approach to the instrument so uh i was i was tinkering with that and um then i started noticing that that it sounded pretty good so i i started um i started using it myself great and what would you say are some of the biggest pros to using a synthetic read? Uh, consistency from day to day as humidity is not so influ influential in how they feel or sound or respond. Um, they don't change anywhere near as dramatically in the break-in process. They do kind of, they do loosen up just a little bit, I've found. So those are, those are my, my favorite pros. And, you know, if you're traveling, you're flying one place to another, it's it's uh it's really helpful to have that kind of consistency um are there any cons to using synthetic reads i found it really expensive to get started to find the right combination of of like cut and and all that with the mouthpiece um but once you find the right situation uh, you don't need to rotate as much you don't deal with so many like useless cane reads um uh, so eventually it, it sort of evens out, but the, the upfront investment, if you will, is a little, is a little, it's a little pricey. Do you have to adjust synthetic reads or do they just come ready to go? I personally do not adjust them, but I do know that some either scrape um, or some even like dip them in like boiling water to make them a little softer. For short periods of time uh, those are those are things i've heard about i've never even tried <laughs> um does it matter where the reed is positioned on the mouthpiece yes i find that it actually needs to be a little bit higher than might be considered optimal um with a cane reed um so you do have to be mindful of that and no matter what the brand within a single brand, um, are all the reads the same if you purchased a Legere or a, a Daddario or any brand of, of, of reed um, in the same strength? Or do they all come the same or are they different? There are slight variances. Um, and I actually think that's a good thing because uh, sometimes you want to favor something a little more resistant, sometimes something a little lighter, depending on you know, the circumstance. Uh, that you're working with. So uh, they uh, do have slight variances. I know some manufacturers even say they're like, yeah, actually it's within an eighth of a strength of that. So a three and a half could be just shy of that. It could be like right on the, the micrometer, if you will, if you're talking about a cane read um, or a little bit, uh, a little bit stronger. And the, there are occasionally issues, but that's what return and exchange policies are for. If there's a manufacturing defect, in other words. Great. And how has this changed um, you as a player? How has it benefited you as a performer? So early in this transition, a non-clarinetist colleague described me as more consistent. Um, so I think that's because I'm able to devote my time to practice entirely rather than carpentry. Like, so 
uh, in three hours, you tinker with reeds for, for a good bit of that and just switching them out with cane. Um, now it's just like two hours, you do two hours. It's, that's, that's what I found really beneficial. Um, I don't have a lot of extra time to just like whittle away on practicing. So um, not having to deal with that really, really, really helps me. And what do you think are some misconceptions about synthetic reeds? And what do you say to those misconceptions? Yeah, I was pretty surprised uh, when I was uh, uh, first uh, going going into this, uh, trying them out, how many people had these sort of like, like oh, gross. Um, <laughs> um, but uh, that the sound quality is inferior or plasticky or something like that. Um, you know, if you go to these, you know, websites of the manufacturers who are making synthetic reeds and you see who, who is endorsing them and playing on them, uh, those are like aspirational and inspirational clarinetists to me. Uh, even if they're only playing on them part-time, they said these are, you know, suitable for professional performance in uh, orchestras that, that I would only like, maybe dream of playing in. <laughs> Uh, so, hey, if it's good enough for them, I think it's good enough for me. It's certainly good enough for, um, for a student. So, but uh, some of that's just uh, because of uh, the early types of synthetic reeds that were very low quality. But you have to start somewhere. Great. And if you boil down to one quick reason, why do you think clarinetists should consider exploring synthetic options? So uh, two things, um, if you're like in a position that restricts your practice time significantly, they make, make, may make your life way easier um, and you're, you're playing more enjoyable. So less scraping and more practicing. Uh, that's always a good thing. Um, and I, I recall uh, reading a Larry Combs quote about his, his approach to synthetic reads. He ended up, he always kept one in his case, uh, the Chicago Symphony Orchestra. Um, so I'm loosely quoting him, but he said that they should just do that as some days it'll be the best option they have available. He also said that his colleagues in the CSO never, never noticed when he was, because he made no big deal about it. He just like, it's like, oh, today's the day that this is the best thing I have. And no one ever said anything or noticed. So those are some pretty, pretty high level listeners, you know, in the Chicago Symphony Orchestra. So uh, that's some evidence of their usability in professional circumstances. Great, thank you so much. You're welcome.